Hi, um, I'm making this uh, video um, hoping that there's some people out there that um, are able to help me either. I have, um, I have not sleep means I have total insomnia. I still can't sleep more than two hours. That's the best. Two hours with nightmare is the best right now. When researching mysteries like this that happen in other countries, I often run into the problem of not being able to access certain websites due to my location. That's just one of the many ways that Surfshark VPN has helped me, and it could help you too. Using a VPN to change your location not only allows you to access websites, YouTube videos, and even Netflix shows that are blocked in your country, but you can also find cheaper plane tickets, and once you're on holiday, you can connect back to a server in your own country to avoid getting locked out of your bank account. Whatever you're doing online, Surfshark VPN makes it safer by securing your data without keeping a record of it, and protecting you from IP and DNS leaks. The best part is, one subscription allows you to run Surfshark on an unlimited number of devices at the same time. If you fancy giving it a try, there's a 30 day money back guarantee, so you've got nothing to lose, and you can even get an 83% discount, plus three months extra for free, by using my code investigator. That works out less than the price of a coffee every month. Small price to pay for convenience, peace of mind, and a more enjoyable experience on the internet. Ricard Siagen began uploading videos right at the end of 2013, showing him working on his client's tattoos and drawing in his sketchbook. A couple of his videos feature his young son, who takes an interest in his artwork. In addition to his Batak-style tattoo designs, he also created some very interesting and unique psychedelic artwork. You can find a few examples online. I'm not sure quite how well known he was, but he certainly seemed to be a respected artist and I found two interviews online featuring him talking about his work. Ricard was originally from Indonesia, and he may have been living in Russia for some time before moving to Philadelphia in America. I assume he was still working as a tattoo artist in Philadelphia, but I don't actually think he's specified. On the 8th of January 2016, his channel took a depressing turn when he uploaded a video titled Che Fatal Insomnia Neurotoxin Induced CNS Seeking Neuroscience Hospital Support or Stem Cell Hope, in which he explains that he had been suffering from severe insomnia for around four months now. He says his body is deteriorating and he is experiencing problems such as a lower immune system. His symptoms started not long after he moved to Philadelphia. He got a urinary tract infection and didn't have health insurance, so his boss gave him some antibiotics, which he later reveals were ciprofloxacin. In this video, he says he won't reveal the name of the antibiotic, perhaps out of fear of repercussions, and he also doesn't want to make this political, though he doesn't go into too much detail on what he means by that, and actually slips up at least once by saying, after taking Cipro. The first day he took them, he started feeling a bit better, but the next evening, he got heart palpitations, back pain, tinnitus, and a cramp or spasm in his hand that prevented him from straightening it. He took Cipro for two weeks, not seeing a doctor for his symptoms because in addition to not having health insurance, the medication wasn't prescribed to him and was given by his boss as a good gesture. When he finished the course, the insomnia began, and every time he tried to get some sleep, his brain just could not rest. It was always active. He finally visited a doctor and was prescribed benzodiazepines, a type of sedative medication that is normally only used as a short-term treatment for severe insomnia due to the risk of dependency. He seems to acknowledge that he will probably die soon and wants to volunteer himself for research, but doesn't totally give up hope that he might recover with the right treatment, in particular stem cell treatment. Towards the end, the video gets harder to watch. Ricard is clearly upset about the situation. He begs anyone who watches the video to help him and says that he doesn't want to die because he still has dreams, like writing more books and building a school in a poor area. He says he would give away both his legs to be able to sleep for just three hours a day without any drugs. After this video, there are a few more showing him drawing again and some that are in another language, I presume Indonesian or Russian. 
I couldn't find any translations and there are no subtitles to auto-translate on the video, so I have no idea what he's saying in those. The next video in English is on the 21st of January. It's basically a rehash of the first video we uploaded explaining his condition, though he talks about how he believes his spinal cord is already damaged and his neurons have been destroyed, and also mentions that he can't walk for more than a minute now. The same day, he uploaded a video titled Conspiracy Theory Fact, in which he rambles for three minutes to make a point that I think has something to do with fake conspiracies being created to distract from the true conspiracies. Some see this video, and some of the later ones, as evidence of Rickard's mental decline, which it could be. However, going off old social media posts, it seems that he was always a bit of a conspiracy theorist, and a somewhat paranoid person in general. He talks about having psychedelic experiences in one of the interviews, so I assume he took drugs, and that might have something to do with it, depending on what drugs. In a Facebook post on the 22nd of March, Rickard posted his conversation with a neuroscience hospital in China that specialises in stem cell treatment. The doctor believed that stem cell therapy could help him and allow him to sleep, though he couldn't afford the cost of flying to China, let alone the twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars for the treatment. It was the end of April before Rickard uploaded on YouTube again. This time he posted two short clips showing him trying to sleep, but his body jolts preventing him from doing so. The next month, he showed his finger shaking and his face covered in dead skin cells. Rickard continued to post inconsistently over the next few months, a few more clips of him trying to sleep, some of him explaining his symptoms in further detail, and asking for people to donate to his fundraiser to help him. Soon, he was no longer able to take care of his son, and by October, he was bedridden. In November, he uploaded a video titled Message to Neurologist, where he told his story again from start to finish, going into more detail on the symptoms he experiences and how they affect him. A few days later, he posted two videos, one titled What is God, and the other HIV Fact, in which he says he believes HIV was created by the Mafia. His final video was on the 4th of December 2016. It's not in English and there are no subtitles, so I'm not exactly sure what it's about, but the description roughly translates to please download to upload later before being deleted perhaps implying that he planned to delete the video later, but didn't want it gone from the internet. At some point between the 6th and the 9th of December, Rickard sadly passed away, the only comfort being that he could finally rest. The most widely accepted theory, and the one that Rickard believed himself, is that his illness and eventual death was caused by the Cipro he took for his UTI. While the antibiotic was once widely prescribed without a second thought, it's used less today due to the risk of serious side effects. Common side effects are similar to many other antibiotics, mainly nausea and diarrhea, and the vast majority of people don't experience anything worse. But more serious side effects have been reported by some, including pain around the body, muscle weakness, tendon rupture, tinnitus, heart palpitations, heart, kidney and liver damage, and most relevantly, insomnia. Although that one isn't nearly as common as others, and isn't even mentioned on many websites, including the NHS. Rickard spoke about many of these serious side effects in his videos, and seeing as he only started experiencing them after taking Cipro, it makes sense that it would be the cause. There are enough reports of serious side effects from Cipro and other fluoroquinolones that the term floxed is sometimes used to describe what the antibiotic can do to people. There are whole communities set up online, including a subreddit, Floxes, for people who have been floxed to discuss their symptoms and offer support and advice to others in similar situations. Some of the posts are from people who only just started taking Cipro and instantly experienced symptoms. They hadn't been warned of the potential side effects and regret not doing their own research first. Others have suffered for months or years and share their experiences and suggestions to help others. The pin post is particularly useful if you want to learn more about fluoroquinolones in general. It advises in depth what to do if you have had a bad reaction, covers what to take and what not to take for many of the common symptoms, and reassures that these symptoms are probably temporary. Most people make a full recovery. There are other communities that very much focus on the frustration and anxiety that so-called floxes feel, but this subreddit feels different. It seems quite positive and focuses more on recovery. Support groups like this were recommended to Rickard, and it sounds like he read through the information they had to offer, 
but he couldn't seem to find anyone going through exactly what he was, so it was of no use to him. While insomnia due to Cipro is very rare, it's not unheard of, and I found a few anecdotes online, one being a video that was uploaded by a German man, Aleve Droll, on the 7th of December 2020. He took Cipro in December 2017, and since then has experienced chronic insomnia, linked with muscle jerks like Rickard, but also gut issues too. At the time of filming, he claims to have not slept at all in four days, hence his eyes are closed for most of the video. He tried a number of medications, supplements and other recommendations, including melatonin, GABA, cannabis and FMT treatment, and some temporarily helped a bit, but nothing worked long term. This is the only video he ever uploaded, and his most recent comment was five months ago, so I don't know if he found a treatment or met the same fate as Rickard. It seems very likely that Cipro has directly caused, or at least contributed, to a number of deaths, but definitively attributing it is difficult because other factors may have been involved. The exact number of recorded deaths varies depending on the source. eHealthMe.com reports 516 deaths, Druginformer.com reports 626 deaths, and other sites give significantly lower or higher numbers. Anyway, it sounds like Rickard could have been Phlox, but we've never actually seen his death certificate or heard from anyone who knew him personally, so we don't actually know what caused any of this, and there are a number of other possibilities. I should probably clear up the fatal familial insomnia misconception. It's what many people to this day believe that Rickard was suffering with as a result of taking Cipro. FFI is an incurable prion disease of the brain. If you've ever heard of prions, you probably already know how terrifying these diseases are. I briefly covered a different prion disease, Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease, think in one of my Medical Mysteries videos, and I'm probably going to do a whole video on them at some point because they're fascinating but so scary. Anyway, the main symptom of FFI is severe insomnia, which soon leads to dementia and death. It's always fatal. FFI is a genetic condition, so Rickard could not have developed it from taking Cipro. Some experts believe its other form, sporadic fatal insomnia, has a genetic link too, though it could also develop spontaneously. The thought of not being able to sleep until you die prematurely is grim, but both FFI and SFI are incredibly rare. It's thought that only around 40 families in the world carry the gene for FFI, and as of 2011, only 16 people had ever been diagnosed with SFI. If you check out Rickard's videos, you'll see every fifth commenter or so claiming to have FFI, which obviously isn't the case. FFI and chronic insomnia seem to be terms that are used interchangeably sometimes, when they are in fact very different conditions, at least in terms of the cause and prognosis. For the sake of playing devil's advocate, it's not absolutely impossible that Rickard had FFI, because the only way it can be diagnosed for sure is by performing an autopsy after death, and no further information to rule it out has been revealed since he died, but it is extremely unlikely. It seems that he believed he had some form of neurotoxin-induced chronic insomnia that was unique to him, not like the regular chronic insomnia, for lack of a better term, that others suffer with. I've seen people factually state in the comments of his videos that he didn't have FFI or suggest other possible causes, and others have jumped on them, insinuating that they're disrespecting his memory, but I'm guessing that they haven't actually watched his videos because he outright states that he does not have FFI or SFI. Regardless, I personally think we'd be doing his memory a disservice if we didn't consider all possibilities. After all, in addition to trying to survive and ensure his son was taken care of, Rickard's priority was finding out what was happening to him, and he never got a definitive answer. Rickard took Cipro for a UTI, but in the video message to Neurologist, he clarifies that a doctor in Indonesia told him that he never actually had a UTI, but rather an obstruction of the bladder sphincter, if I heard correctly. If the Cipro was the cause of his death, that's even more sad because he didn't even need antibiotics at all. However, this also opens up another possibility, that whatever he thought was a UTI was actually the cause of his insomnia and eventual demise. I'm not going to spend too much time speculating on specifically what might have caused this, I'm not a doctor and there are so many possibilities so I could just be barking up the wrong tree, but if anyone has the knowledge to speculate further, please do so in the comments. Just through googling his symptoms, I found multiple conditions that could fit at least some of his symptoms, 
ranging from conditions that directly affect the nervous system, such as motor neuron disease and multiple sclerosis, to conditions that you might not initially relate to the nervous system, including various types of cancer. I'm not saying Cipro didn't cause Ricard's symptoms, or that it didn't at least contribute, but I wonder if there was something else at play that never got diagnosed, at least not that we're aware of. It's fairly clear that he did visit the doctor on more than one occasion. In one of his videos, he showed all the medication he'd been prescribed to help him sleep. However, certain details make me wonder how involved medical professionals were, and how much of what Ricard told us about his condition came directly from his doctor as opposed to his own research, which may or may not have been accurate. He actually made a couple of posts on Facebook talking about how doctors tend not to believe that their patient's symptoms are caused by Cipro, implying that his doctor believed the root cause was something else. I'm not dismissing Cipro, but I can't help but wonder if Ricard just needed something to blame and became fixated on Cipro. As sad and scary as this is, sometimes things like that just happen to people. They get sick and it's not always clear why. For some, it's more comforting to pinpoint a cause and have something to fight for in a sense, rather than just accept that the cause isn't known. If, for whatever reason, Ricard couldn't accept that his doctors didn't know the cause, or that they thought it was something else that didn't make sense to him, it's totally plausible that he became focused on trying to figure out the cause himself, likely through researching online. Some have speculated that Ricard, whether intentionally or not, exaggerated how little sleep he got, because as far as his videos actually showed, he didn't deteriorate quite as much as you'd expect if he literally only slept a couple of hours each night for well over a year. At least his face didn't change much between his first and last video about his symptoms, and towards the end he was still able to speak quite fluently in a non-native language, even if he was talking about conspiracies and God. Though going off some of his older social media posts, I'm not sure those topics were so out of character. Objectively, it's hard to judge his deterioration just by seeing him in a few videos, and you can't always tell how ill someone is just by looking at them or hearing them talk. But it is a possibility that Rickard either didn't realise he was getting a bit more sleep, insomnia at any level can cause confusion, or that he was exaggerating his symptoms a bit with hopes that he'd be taken more seriously, which would be totally understandable if he felt that his doctor wasn't listening to him, or didn't understand his symptoms. If you look through the comments on Ricard's videos, it's hard to miss one individual using at least three different accounts, who's hell-bent on exposing him as a fraud. They believe he was intentionally lying about his condition to scam money out of people because in addition to him looking and acting like he slept more than he said, he never showed any proof of his condition, his gestures supposedly suggest that he's lying, such as him looking away from the camera and saying, erm a lot, which is a bit of a stretch to say the least. They also claim that Rickard said he already had insomnia before taking Cipro. I watched all of his videos that were in English and I couldn't find where he said that. While some points this person makes in their comments could potentially cast doubt on some details, I don't see any reason to think that Rickard totally fabricated the whole story. He was clearly suffering and almost certainly died. There are quite a few mentions of his death online, including a Facebook post that appears to have been written by his employer or people he worked with, and the multiple social media accounts I've found for Ricard have all been inactive since December 2016 or earlier. But the commenter, who often posts under the name Marsika, somehow believes that Ricard could have faked his own death, or that he was mentally ill and decided to take his own life. I think it's a plausible theory that he did choose to end his life. He spoke about it in videos, implying that he wanted to, but couldn't bring himself to actually do it. A couple of his Facebook posts within the last month or so before his death were hinting more so at it. For example, one on the 9th of November 2016. It's translated to English, so it doesn't read perfectly, but you get the gist. When lost all hope and all forms of human fear, irreversible pains, sorrow, and abyss has overtaken, considered ending it all. I don't believe those are the words of a man who was faking everything to scam people out of their money. If he did take his own life, it'd be even more tragic in a sense, as who knows if the insomnia and other symptoms really were fatal. Maybe he thought he'd die from his condition anyway and he'd suffered enough already. There are many posts on the Flox's subreddit from people who have recovered though, at least for the most part. Some have gone from being in serious and constant pain and being bedridden, to walking and exercising again and living relatively normal lives. 
The length of time symptoms lasted varies from person to person. Some had it bad for a few months, whereas others were only starting to make improvements years after taking Cipro. The recommended supplements seemed to help a lot of people, and it seems that Rickard tried some of these very early on, to no avail, though I'm not sure he tried everything. From what I gather, the exact formula for recovery is not always easy to figure out. It can be different for everyone and sometimes requires multiple supplements and lifestyle changes such as fasting, so it's possible that Rickard just never found his perfect combination. Throughout my research, I wondered if the medication that Rickard was prescribed could have contributed to his deterioration, which would be even more likely if he really was floxed, but his doctor thought it was something else. Cipro can cause enough problems by itself, but when combined with other incompatible medication, the effects can be so much worse. According to the pinned post on the Fluxes subreddit, ibuprofen should be avoided because of an increase of oxidative stress. That's a very common drug that you probably wouldn't think twice about before taking it for a headache or muscle pain. Another medication mentioned is benzodiazepines, which Rickard was prescribed long term for his insomnia. Benzos are usually only prescribed for a short time for that purpose because of the risk of dependency, and the longer they're taken, the higher the risk of side effects such as depression, impaired concentration and memory, and other cognitive problems. Perhaps this drug, and others he'd been prescribed, always taking recreationally, made the Cipro problem worse and prevented him from recovering like others have. This is quite a complex story if you dig deep. I've been ill for like the last week, so I probably spent way longer than I should have lying in bed researching and overanalyzing every detail. The Cipro theory is pretty solid, but considering what we know for sure about the situation, which is really very little, it's impossible to say. Whether Cipro was to blame or not, Rickard's deterioration and death has educated many of us on the risks of taking fluoroquinolones. I know if I was prescribed Cipro now, I'd definitely be requesting an alternative. It also highlighted the problem with taking medication that you haven't been prescribed. While the negative effects of fluoroquinolones are becoming more well known, unfortunately it seems that they are still over-prescribed, so you could still be at risk even if they were prescribed to you. But in this case, at least, Rickard just took them without even consulting with the doctor. Had he done so, there's a chance he'd still be alive today, considering it seems he never actually needed any antibiotics in the first place. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. Do you think Rickard's death was Cipro related or do you think there was another cause? If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Huge thank you to my patrons, whose names are on screen now, I really appreciate your support. And thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description and use code INVESTIGATOR for an 83% discount plus 3 months extra free. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.